Hi guys, it's your friendly neighborhood headbanger Terry here. And I just thought I would pop in, do a little ramble, and tell you how my staycation went. Now, if you watched my last video, I believe it's my last video, I talked a little bit about how I was going on a staycation. And a uh, staycation just simply means I'm going on vacation, but I'm not traveling very far away. And I didn't. I went to the city next door to mine that I live in. And it's about mm, maybe a 25, 30 minute drive away. And I went, let's see, I left this past Monday and came back Wednesday, yesterday. And I went to a place called the Carnegie it's a beautiful hotel. It's a AAA four diamond hotel, so it's very nice. And I'll describe it a little bit to you. It has a, a normal entrance that you can go in, but it also has a revolving door, an old timey revolving door entrance that you could go in. And when my husband and my daughter came with me to drop me off there, my daughter got to go in the uh, revolving door entrance and thought that was pretty cool. So you walk into the lobby, and the lobby has a beautiful carpet down, and all the wood in the hotel and in the lobby is dark. So it sort of has a um, 1920s look to it. And it's a beautiful big front desk, and you go and you check in, and once you've checked in, oh, I forgot to tell you, there's a there was a beautiful, very old, antique grand piano in the lobby. It was not a Steinway, and I could not make out the name, uh, so I don't know who the maker of the piano was, but it had a beautiful combination of dark wood with some light wood inlaid around it, making kind of a scroll pattern around it, and it was really beautiful. I should have taken a picture and I forgot. Um, also downstairs, the hotel has a little library nook. There's a fireplace, and there are chairs, and there are tables, and um, it just it's just a really nice place to sit, and you can read. In the winter, the fireplace is lit, and it's a really pretty uh, ambiance. Uh, the, uh, the hotel also has a spa. A full service spa, everything you can think of, every spa treatment you can come up with. They, they do everything from seaweed wraps to aromatherapy baths to uh, full massage, facials, mani, pedi, hair salon, all the things. Um, it also has a very nice restaurant called Wellington. And inside of Wellington, there is an antique old wooden full service bar. And of course, I didn't go to the bar because I don't drink, but um, I thought, you know, just so much attention has been put into detail to make it look like a 1920s uh, hotel. I felt like I should have had a flapper dress on. And when you go to the elevators, the elevators don't have the digital one, two, three, four to tell you what floor the elevator's on. It has the needle, the arrow that goes like this across to tell you what floor the elevator's on. So very old fashioned. You get in the elevator, there's more dark wood, hardwood floors, just absolutely gorgeous. So anyway, we take the elevator up to the third floor and I opened the door to my room, which is a big oversized room, has a king-size bed in it. It's a sleigh bed, the type where um, the, out, the end of the bed curls out and the top of the bed curls out. So it kind of looks like a sleigh and very pretty. Uh, bathroom had a huge walk-in shower and a nice deep tub to soak in, which I took advantage of, by the way. And so just a really nice room, 37 inch flat screen TVs, refrigerator, coffee maker, all the stuff. So they dropped me off there uh, on Monday afternoon, a little bit after three, and they leave and I proceed to do one of the things that I love to do, but I can't do around my daughter because the content upsets her, is I proceed to start watching true crime. I turn on the investigative discovery channel and I watch true crime after true crime after true crime. Now, I don't want you to think I watch true crime because, you know, I'm like a psycho or anything. 
But no, I like to watch true crime because I like to see how they're caught. I like to see the forensics. I like to see the, uh, the psychological profiles that the investigators come up with. Um, I like to know, you know, who did it, why they did it, and how they got caught. So I'm watching my true crime, and while I'm watching my true crime, I'm eating the best cookies. Because, by the way, there was no Weight Watchers on it, on this, this little staycation. I did not count any points. Uh, I took two days off from dieting. And I had the best salted caramel chocolate chip cookies. They come from Arby's. If you haven't tried them, you've got to go try them if there's an Arby's near you. They are absolutely fantastic. So I was eating those and just sitting back, laid back on my, uh, on my bed, uh, drinking some Propel water that I brought with me and just having a really nice time. So I spend the, the rest of the evening enjoying watching TV and snacking and I go to bed and I wake up the next morning to a fire alarm. Yes, the fire alarm is going off and all of a sudden this voice goes down the hall and says, an emergency has been reported in the hotel. Please report to the nearest stairwell and go to your designated meeting place. Okay, first of all, had no idea where my designated meeting place was. But I get up and you have to understand, I, I'm being woken up. It's like, I don't know, 8.30, 9 o'clock, but I was going to sleep late. So I have this ratty t-shirt on and Eeyore pajama pants. This is what I'm sleeping in. And it's no bra on, you know, just there you go. So I go out into the, the hallway. Luckily, I remember to take my key. I go out in the hallway and then I realize I don't have any shoes on. So I go back into the room and slip my sandals on and off I go down three flights of stairs. Now, I have a fairly progressive arthritis issue, so that was fun, going down three flights of stairs. But I have to say, everyone who was going down the stairs with me, because there were two floors above me that had to go downstairs, and that we were all pretty like, nah, you know, okay, hey, good morning, how you doing? You know, nobody was in a really bad mood. And we got out to the outside of the building, and I see a guy over to the left of me weed eating. And I'm like, okay, I think if we were all on the brink of death or burning down, this guy would not be weed-eating outside. I think he might have left or, you know, gone to a safe place. So we all get together uh, at the main entrance of the, the, the hotel, the part that goes into the main lobby I told you about. And we stand there for, I don't know, maybe five minutes. And all of a sudden, we hear a voice say, okay, you can come back in now. And we all go back in, and this time we get to use the elevators, so that's nice. And we go back up to our room. And I think, well, that was an interesting way to start the day. I'm just going to lay back down because I have a spa appointment at 1 o'clock that day. I am going to have a 60-minute facial and a mani and a pedi. And I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be so awesome because I've had a facial at that spa before and they are wonderful. My skin was glowing afterwards and it felt so good. So I'm really looking forward to it. I wake up the next time with a headache and not just a headache, it's a migraine. So I think, okay, I need Imitrex, my migraine medicine. And then I stop and think, I don't have Imitrex. My Amatrex is at home. Okay then, let's just think this through for a minute. So I think, okay, I can call Bill and see if he and C can bring me my Amatrex. And that will get rid of the headache, but it'll also knock me out. So either way, if I stay and battle through the migraine, or if I have them come and bring me my Imitrex, which will knock me out, either way, I'm going to miss my spa appointment. So I'm like, okay, I'll call and I will cancel my spa appointment. They were very nice about it. They did not uh, charge me a cancellation fee because I was a uh, guest at the hotel, and apparently that made a difference. So um, I still have my gift certificate, and I can still use it at another time. So uh, because it was a gift certificate, you know, I, I didn't, I, I still will be able to use it at some time. So that wasn't a total loss, <clears throat> excuse me, except for the fact that I didn't get to go that day. 
So I called Bill and I said, Bill, I have a migraine. I don't have any Imatrex. He's like, got it. We're on the way. And I said, well, don't rush because I'm going to try to sleep. And I did sleep some more and they got there about four, I think. They had stopped at Barnes & Noble Bookstore on the way to give me a little time to sleep. And while they were there, C, because she is the sweetest girl on the face of the planet, um, she knows I like gothic literature, especially gothic horror, because, you know, I am a headbanger, so I have to like horror at least a little bit. So she got me Frankenstein, the original Mary Shelley Frankenstein, which I had read but did not own. And so that was super cool that she got me that. And they came, and I took my Imatrex, and I think I slept a little bit more. Honestly, on days I have migraines, my, it's, my memory's a little hazy. But I do know that at some point, I was like, I'm hungry. Because all I've had to eat up to that point since I've been at the staycation is Arby's salted caramel chocolate chip cookies and some... Um, Lance's Captain's Wafers Crackers, because I had planned on going to Wellington, a really nice restaurant, um, after my spa treatment. So here we are, no spa treatment, and um, Bill's like, do you feel like getting dressed and going to Wellington? We could all three go together, and I was like, no, I, I'm really not feeling that, because after the Imatrex, even after the headache's gone, I'm a little, little loopy, little unsettled. So, he's like, well, what do you want to eat? And what did we decide? We decided the ever popular and always fun Chick-fil-A. So, he left to go get us Chick-fil-A. And Chelsea, or excuse me, C, you did not hear her name. We're going to edit that out. Well, we probably won't, but just forget you heard it. Anyway, C stayed with me, and we talked, and we laughed. And I told her, I said, I've missed you. And she said, well, I missed you, too. And I was concerned about how she would do with me being away. But she actually did pretty well. And I was really proud of her. And we talked about that. And then Bill came back with uh, the Chick-fil-A. We ate the Chick-fil-A. We talked a little bit more. And I even invited them to stay the night if they wanted to. Because we had the, I had the king-size bed and also a couch that was plenty big enough for someone to sleep on. And they decided that since I was feeling a little bit better, that they were going to let me uh, stay the night and they were going to go on back home, which was, like I said, only 25, 30 minutes away. So they left and went home and I realized that I felt better, that I really, you know, my headache was gone. So I Facebooked a little bit and I did text with one person but not for very long. And I'd said that I was going to go radio silent. I was not going to text with anyone, take any calls from anyone. Uh, and I did, with the exception of this one person for just a few texts that we exchanged, um, I, I did that. I, I was radio silent, and it was very good for me. Very good for me to just unplug and turn off and that kind of thing. So, of course, what do I go back to watching? My true crime. So I'm watching some true crime on TV, and I watch a few videos on YouTube, and I come to a realization, and the realization is that, let's see, was that for dinner? Yeah, for dinner, I had 32 ounces of caffeine, because I had 32, the big, big, big cup uh, from Chick-fil-A of Coke Zero. And because I'm crazy, after I finished it, I cracked open a Diet Pepsi that I brought, or no, they brought to me. So I had had something like, I don't know, 48 ounces of caffeine before I went to bed. No, that's not going to happen. I tried to lay down. I tossed. I turned. I got up. I thought, well, I'll watch some more videos and that will, you know, get, that'll put me to sleep. I even tried watching ASMR videos. Uh, from some of my favorite content creators, you know, hoping that would put me out. Nope. I'm sorry, ASMR people. I have some of you that I really, really love, but 48 ounces of caffeine, that's a hard battle to fight. I'm afraid you lost. So I did not wind up going to sleep. Uh, when morning came, when the light, you know, when the sunlight came up, I took a shower. Luckily, we did not have a fire drill. And I called uh, Bill and said, you know, when are you guys going to head this way? And they said about 10 o'clock. 
and about 10.30, they got there. We went down and checked out, and uh, my staycation was officially over at that point. We drove back home, and uh, I have to say, it was, even though it was kind of a Murphy's Law type thing, everything that could have gone wrong kind of did go wrong. I didn't do any of the things I planned to do, like go to the spa or go to Wellington or any of those things. But I had a really good time. I was able to watch the TV shows I like to watch. I spent time with my family in a completely neutral place where I didn't have to worry about cleaning anything up or anything like that. And then they left and I had more alone time. So even though it wasn't the staycation I pictured, it was probably the staycation I needed. I had some, well, except for the migraine. Nobody needs a migraine. But I had time with my family. I watched the shows I wanted to watch, and I did manage to unplug and chillax, and um, now that I'm back, I got back yesterday, and this has been my first full day back, I can tell. I can tell the difference, because when I walked into the house, there was stuff everywhere. Uh, uh, C and Bill had gone and gotten some snacks for themselves, and it, there was, it was kind of a little bit of a mess in the kitchen and a little bit of a mess in the living room, but it didn't bother me. It really did not bother me. Now, it's probably going to bother me about tomorrow, but um, I just felt really chill and relaxed, and it was a really good thing. So, what I took from this is that um, there's a TikTok channel called Gregisms, and one of the things that he says, and it's probably trademark, so I'll say that, trademark, uh, is find your joy. And... I can say that even though that staycation didn't go the way I had it planned, I didn't have any trouble finding my joy. There was joy everywhere. Oh, I forgot to tell you, both nights I took a long, hot bubble bath with spearmint and eucalyptus scented uh, bubble bath that was given to me by my daughter. She's so good at gifts. Um, each bath that I took, the one Tuesday night and the one Wednesday night, was probably about 20 minutes long a piece. And I just felt everything go, <sighs> it was wonderful. So that was a big source of joy. Watching the shows I like um, was a source of joy. Having my family with me, but also leaving me and giving me more alone time was a source of joy. Uh, being able to get the medicine I needed for my migraine and my migraine going away was a source of joy. Uh, just being in that beautiful hotel with all those beautiful surroundings and that lovely 1920s motif going on was a source of joy. So, um, Greg is right. Find your joy. And it may be hard to find and it may be that things didn't go the way you wanted them to go, but it's there. Sometimes you just have to dig a little deep and, and try and find it, but it's there. All right, guys, this was just a little kind of short update to let you know how my staycation went. Uh, next video will probably be to uh, true crime, but I really haven't come up with an idea for it yet, and I haven't researched anything yet, so it may be probably sometime next week before, before it comes out. Sorry, I've got a frog in my throat for some reason. <clears throat> anyway, I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, stay safe and take care of yourselves, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.